pointers. This session, we would like to discuss a little advanced topic. This is pointers. So especially in C programming, uh, the pointers heavily used. You have to learn how to handle those pointers and the applications. In simple speaking, a pointer is a constant or variable that contains an address, memory address that can be used to access the data. So usually when you use programs, you create variables. The variables used to store and retrieve data. So using the pointers, we can directly get the memory address of that particular variable. So in the pointer operations in C programming language, we use two special character symbols. So ampersand signs, when you put this ampersand sign in front of any variable in C, the address of that particular variable will be returned. So we already know about it. So especially when you use scanf function to read the data into a variable, we pass the address to the scanf functions. We will learn how, why we need to pass the address in, in a minute. So how do you get the address? of a variable using this ampersand sign. Similarly, there is a variable called as pointers. In this pointer variable, we are storing the addresses. So if we have a pointer variable using this star sign, we can, we can get the value stored in this address. How do you define the data? How do you declare and define the pointer data? Actually using this star symbol. So the usually you know when you create a data, we have a data declaration. There we put the type, so like integers, characters, and so on, and the variable name that is called as identify. Identify. Similarly, we can declare a pointer variable. So when you want to declare a pointer variable, we have to put the type of that variable and then star. And then we write identifier. So any type with the star will create a pointer of this particular type. So for example, character A will create a memory location to store characters in the memory. So character star will create a pointer variable in memory. So in that pointer location, we can store the address of the character. So, so int n will create a place in the memory to store the integers. In star q will create a place in the memory to store the address of integers. Same for the plot. Plot x will create a location to store plotting for eight numbers. Plot star r will create a variable called r in the memory that is a pointer variable. That location we can store the address of plotting for eight numbers. So you, I guess you have an idea of how we store the addresses. So for example, uh, how do you store the variables? For example, if there is a character variable called x and character variable called y, so there is a symbol table basically created by a programming language. There they name some memory location called x. If you don't give a value to that, value here is usually handled. Some programming language put that initial value to be zero even you don't initialize it. 
But in the C, you have to know they are not initializing. Because of that, if you just create a variable like that, it may have some random value. So if you want to put an initial value, you have to put it like that. So for example, here we create a character variable for y. Initial value is e. That means in the memory, somewhere in the memory, they will store the character e. Address of that place is 5. In this example, address of x is 4. So if you want, we can store those address somewhere in the other variable and using that address, we can access those values. This is exactly how pointers works. So for example, so using this ampersand sign, we get the address of, ampersand sign refers as address of reference operator. That means putting this ampersand sign in front of any variable name, we can get the address of that particular variable. The star symbol, call it as memory act or difference. This is a difference operator that usually refers as memory act. So when you put at star sign in front of any pointer variable, so we will get the content of that particular memory. So for this example here, so we have a function called f will have has a parameter, so it's a character pointer, it's the input parameter. That means this function takes address of a character into the function. So after that, what it do? It take the star p, that means the data which store in this particular address, and then reduce 32 from that. Usually as characters, store the ASCII values. So ASCII value of that character will be minus by 32. So the result will be stored in the same memory location. So that's why we put it star p here. So if you call this function f something like here, so we have initialized, we have, we have initialized a character called y with this ASCII value, and we pass the address of y. So that's address of y will pass to this function, then this operation will happen. That means the content of this place, we, uh, y address, uh, address of y or the content of y consists of 101 and then 101 will be reduced 32 and the result is stored in the same place. Since this y and this address of p referring to the same memory address, so this variable get changed. So as we discussed, so if you pass any variable into a function, so that <clears throat> variable change within the function that may not reflect into the caller. So if you want to get reflect that changes back to the caller, what we do, we pass that. Out. So that is the one of the purpose of using pointers. The passing the large objects with copying them into the stack is cost costly. So instead of we can pass address without making a copy of that point, then we can dynamically allocate memory using the pointers, and we can also use pointers to refer in functions. So that for it has function pointers. Let's take some example to understand what happens when we use pointers. So definitely, I will create a separate uh, video which demonstrate that. Uh, let's see this simple C function. It has the main function, and it take, it, it it declares two variable called a and b. We are not initializing it here, and then. Using this printf statement, we print two values, that is address of A, address of B. Printf statement, you know, it takes formatting characters. So present HD for integers, percentage F for floating point numbers, you know, percentage C 
for characters. Similarly, present HP is the formatting character for memory addresses. So if you put present HP and ask the system to put, print the memory address, it will print the memory address of the terminal. M sign A will return the address of A. M sign B will return the address of B. So if you ask the system to print these two, they will print these two. So that means variable A stores the data in this particular address. Variable B stores the data in this particular address. Using this formatting character P, we can print the addresses on the terminal. So then we can store values. For example, if you store some value, for example, minus 123 in this memory location. So we can address that using this pointer variable. Pointer variable is some other memory location. There we can store this address of A. So address of A we know that. So when you create a pointer variable that can store those addresses. So this address is directly referring to the memory location. So we can have any number of pointers created referring to the same location. Thus, we could uh, kind of uh, vice versa. So value of P, so basically if you have P pointer variable, it has address. So that address referring to this particular memory location. Similarly, we can create another pointer variable called Q and assign this address of A to that. So then both pointers, P and Q, referring to the same memory location. So using this memory address, we can store and access those data stored in this particular memory location in addition to this variable A. So in order to demonstrate that, we can run this program and see what's happened later on. So there what's happened, there is a variable, integer variable called A, and integer pointer variable called P. So then we assign value 14 to the A, and we assign the address of A to the P. And besides her name is address of variable A to the P. Then there is a memory location called P. It has the address of this variable A. So variable A contains the value 14. So when print F statement, what we print? The integer value and address. So integer value we print A. The address we print, address of A. So when you say print A, we will get 14. And address of A, we get this. So if you want to use pointers to address this variable, we have to put star here instead of A, we can put star P. Star P referring to the data stored in this particular address. So for example, so here we initialize uh, some variable called integer A, here pointer P, when you do that, there is a memory location called A. There are no values, random value in there. So when you create like pointer P, there is a random value there, that's unknown memory location. So after that, we say int P, and we've assigned the address of A to P. That means P has, this P memory location has the address of A. So this is the declaration. So this is the initialization. So how do you define a point, declare a point variable like that here? And how do you initialize it like here? So in, in the initializing, what you have to do is give, give the address of some variable to the point variable P. So basically the point variable P can refer to the different memory locations time to time. So for example, one P, maybe refers to A, and then it can refer to B, or it can refer to C. Similarly, there might be a several pointer variables referring to a 
same memory location. That means P, Q, and R pointers store the address, same address. So then they can access the same memory area of the variable A. So here there is a pointer variable called P. So first maybe store address A, then he can store address B, then it can store address C. So then pointer P variable can refer to the different address at different time. Right. Now let's see some examples. In this example, what I would like to show you some application of pointers. So usually, as I mentioned, when you pass a variable to a function, and so what's happened? So the copy of a variable will put it into the local or the stack of this function. So then if we do any changes within the function, that may not reflect back to the call. So let's say we want to write a function called swap. So it take two integer values and swap them together. That means the value of x will, should be equal to y, value of y should be equal to x. So if you just pass these two variables to these swap functions and then exchange them, that exchange may not reflect to the caller. So because of that, just passing the variable name may not work in this SAP function. So, so if you want to write a SAP function in C, so we, we have to use pointers. So for example, here I create a SAP function which take integer star x, integer star y. Star refers to the point. So I'm creating two variables called x and y they are integer pointers. So then what's happened? Inside the program, I'm creating an integer called p, and value of x will be assigned to p. When you put star x, x is the address, you know. So when you put a star in front of address, so then, so system will go to this particular memory address, and then take that value in this memory address. So that value we assign to the temporary variable called p, integer variable called p. So after that, what we do, we take the star y, that means the value of this address y, and assign to the value place of address x, star x referring to the address x. So then what's happened, the memory location of x, we copy the value, memory location of y, to the memory location of x. So after that, the value we temporarily store on the variable p will assign to the y. So then x and y value gets exchanged. So in this main method, so you see I'm creating x and y. These are integer variables. So these x and y and these x and y are two different. So this x and y refers to this main function. So this referring to this sub function, right? So in the main function, it calls the SAP. So when you call in the SAP, we pass the address of X and address of Y. So these addresses will go into this SAP function. And using this address, we directly access this particular location and exchange the data. Because of that, the change we did here affect to the caller or the main function. So that means these two variable gates interchange or the sum. So when you pass in uh, the parameters to the function, there are two types you we discuss the pass by value or pass by reference. So when you pass the addresses, we are passing the data using pass by reference method. So usually in the default method is pass by value. So in C the arrays, when you want to pass the array to a function, so C always part it, pass it as a reference. That means array will pass, address of this array will pass to the function. So you remember, we discussed the command line argument. Here in the command line argument, we can give a 
parameter in the main function. So that is a character pointer to a character array. So you know, arguments are the data which we type at the top form where we run the program. So each uh, data which we type on the prompt, take it as a string, string mean the character array. So this character array is stored and we create an address of pointing to this character array. So that is what it is, ARGB. Star ARGB is actually pointer address. So using this pointer address, we can get the values similarly uh, ARGB1 will get the uh, first string location address of the first string. Actually, here by doing that, we creating what we call pointer to the point because arrays are anyway pointers. So we created what we call it as pointers to the points. So in the C, that is valid. So pointers to the pointers referring. Uh, a concept where we create another pointer which create uh, locate, uh, uh, which direct to the point. So for example, so there might be variables in the memory. So we can create a pointer which referring to this variable. So then we can create another pointer which referring to that point. So it's visually something look like that. So how do you create pointers to the point? So here you see, I have a variable called integer a, then I have, I'm creating a pointer variable called p. So here I'm creating integer pointer to the pointer called q. So usually pointer variable p can contain address of integer variables. So pointer to the pointer variable called q can store address of integer pointers. So, so you, I hope you may not get confused. So for example, so let's say there is a variable A here, which to 58. So variable A has address, that is this. So we can create a point variable called P here, that is a separate memory location of address. That location also has address. So for example, this particular point P can store address of this A. So that place also has address, as you may understand. So that address we can store some other point variable that we call pointer to the point. So this is a pointer to the pointer variable for Q. That variable Q can store address of P. So that's how it happens in the code. So we have a variable A which initialized to 58. So address of A we can store in the P. Address of P we can store in the Q. So if you want to get the value using those two A, P, Q, so that's how we do. So if you want to print this uh, content of A, we can just pass the variable name A. If you want to access the same content using this pointer variable po called P, so we have to put star and P, that referring to the same memory location. So if you use, want to use pointer to the pointer variable to access this memory location, then you have to put two stars. Two stars Q mean go to this preference and then go to the variable. So it's visually something like that. We have the variable A, the pointer P will refer to that. So we have another variable Q, which referring to the Q. Similarly, if you want, we can create it pointer to the pointer to the pointer variable as well. Right. So in addition to that, there is what we call it as pointer arithmetic. So for example, in the pointer variable values can add minus and so on. So when I do a demonstration, I will show those pointer arithmetics. So the other interesting part of the pointer is a function point. So similarly, so we are using pointers to directly accessing variables. Similarly, we can use the pointers to the directly access functions. So that's what it has function pointers. So for example, here we create a function pointer. So in this program has a main method. So we here create a function pointer 
So name of that is function PGR. It will star in front of the variable and put the bracket. So that's how we create the quantum pointer. After that, in the bracket, we need to put the parameters of this particular function. If we want to create a function pointer, which pointing to a function, which take integer as input, so we declare something like that. And then the return value of this function is void. That void means. So for example, such function I created on the top. So this called as function, which take integer as a, and it, it just prints some uh, data on the terminal. So then what's happened? We, we can create a function pointer here, and then this function has a name. So we put ampersand sign in front of the function. That means we take the, it takes the address of this particular function. If you write a function, the code of this function should be stored in the memory. So there is an initial address or the starting address of this function. So when you put ampersand sign function name returns the starting address of this particular function. So this starting address can then assign to a variable called function point. So, using that then, we can execute this function if you wish. How do you do that? We put bracket, star and give the function pointer that tells the system to go to this particular memory location to execute this function. So obviously this function take a parameter, it is a parameter. So using the bracket, we have to pass this parameter. So calling like that, we can call this particular function. So you might ask, in order to call a particular function, do we need to do all these things? Why do we want to do all these things to just to call a function? Let's take an example to understand the uh, usefulness of this concept. So here, so I, I create a variable called main. It takes create three integer variables, a uh, function called main. In this main function, you see I'm uh, initializing uh, three integer variables. They are S, A, and B. So after that, you see, I create a function point. So this function pointer, re referring to a function which return an integer value. So here we put int. That means this particular function returns an integer value. So this fu point function pointer name is P. Identifier of this function pointer is P. Then after that, we put the brackets and then tells input parameter of this function. So this particular function will take two integers. So for example, after that, so you see I do some comparison. I will show what it is in the demo. And then I call this uh, function, which I'm referring to. So in this if conditions, you see this function pointer p, I get the address of f1 to this function pointer p, then else I get the address of function two. That means there are two functions in my program called f1 and f2, this, which match this prototype. That means there's a function called f1, which take two integers and return integer. Then there is a function called f2, which takes two integers and input and return an integer as output. So, so such function addresses can store in the function pointer p. The usefulness of that is using that function pointer p, we can call so function f1 or function f2 based on some condition. So for example, there is a condition here. Based on that condition, we, add, we assign the address of f1 or address of f2 to p. So then we can call star p with the two parameters a and b here. So then, so which function calls depend on the address we store on this function pointer. So if in this look time, if that function pointer p has the address of function f1, so this call will call the function f1. At that time, this function p, a function pointer p has the address of f2, so this call will create the function f2. So like that, we can pick 
which function to execute based on some conditions. So then obviously I print the results of that. So you may understand what really happens behind when I do the demonstrations. Okay, so that's all about pointers. So when you write programs, especially with the pointers, it's really hard to debug. So if something goes wrong, so it's really difficult to find it out the place where you uh, uh, do a mistake. So if you want to debug any C program, C provide a debugger. So it's called dash GDB. No debugger, GDB, like GCC. GCC refers to no C. So we use that GCC to compile a C program. Similarly, we can use GDB to debug the C program. Debug referring to finding errors. When you write a program, you cannot always write a program without errors. Obviously, your program may have errors. So then we need to locate those errors and correct it. So no debugger helps us to locate the errors. So for example, if you want to compile a C program, you know we write GCC and source file name. So then the GCC will create an executable called a.out. So if you want to create an executable with particular name, we use a minus O option. So then we say GCC, then source file name, then minus O, and then we can give executable file name. So then this source file will be converted to this executable file using this GCC compile. So that's how we basically compile and run the C program. So in case you want to debug, we have to use a different option additional option called minus G. So the command to create a debugged program is something like that. We type GCC. If you have any other options, we can type that. The mandatory option for debugging is minus G, and we have to give a source file name, and minus O, and we can give the executable name. So then GCC will create a executable with this name including the debugging information so this debugging information can be used by the gdb or the debugger to debug this program so how do you debug the program let's say we create a program executable called program 1x and using a program 1c source file so then first of all we have to compile this program 1c source file using minus g option. So there we need to type gcc minus g program 1.c and minus o program 1.x. So that is executable. So after we do that, it created program 1.x executable, which is which include debug information. So then we run debugger at the front typing gdb after that we can load a program to be debugged into the debug so how do you do that you type a file and the pro executable to be debug name of executable which should be debug so then this program with the debug information loaded to the debugger or what you call it as gdb so then after load the program to the GDB, we can directly execute that using run command. So we just run and press enter key. So then debugger will execute the program. So if that program get crashed somewhere, so the debugger will give us a report something like that. It might tell us this line of this code, for example, has a problem. So in this example, array some array minus region 2 dot c line number 2 has the issue so that creates the crash debugger will tell us which line of the code caused the crash so then we can understand the runtime errors obviously compilation errors will identify the compiler 
debugger will use to identify or locate the runtime errors or the runtime crashes or the executable issues. So we just can't, then if, let's say our program crash. So if it get crashed, debugger will just the cache fail. As you may understood, debugging is very interesting uh, exercise. And sometimes when you do debug, you need to stop your program at the middle of execution to find it out the errors. So how do you ex stop execution of the program at the middle? So for that, you have to introduce breakpoints into the debug. Breakpoints are the places where we should tell the program to stop the execution. So, so in my example, let's say I want to stop the execution at the line number six of the source file. So then I need to introduce the breakpoint to the debugger. How do you do that? At the debugging part, I type break and the file name, colon, the line number where I should stop. So first, then the steps is, first we load the program to be debugged, and then using break command, introduce breakpoints where you want to stop the execution, and then do give run command. So then, debugger will execute the program unto, uh, up to this line number six, and stop the execution. So then we can watch the variables or we can watch the behavior of the program and watch the variables of the program. So after a stop at the particular point, we can continue execution using continue command, or you can run the program line by line or step by step using step command. So what you do in the debugging process, usually what we do, we introduce a breakpoint, stop the execution there, and we watch the variables, values of the variables, to understand the reason of crashing. And after that, we can continue. Or we can continue step by step to locate the error. So obviously, after your execution, stop at somewhere. So we need to know the values of particular variable at that time. So that's how we can get the information or the reason for crashing. So if you want to observe the value of the variable at the breaking point, you can use a command called print. So after debug stop your execution at the breakpoint, you type print and the variable name where you want to see the value. So it then print the uh, content of this particular variable. So similarly, there is a command called watch. Two important commands to observe the variable behaviors. One is to print and get the value. Other one is to watch. So after your program execution, stop at the breakpoint, you can use watch and give the variable name. Then what happens? So any time that variable get modified, old value and the new value will be printed on the terminal. So if sometimes without your knowledge, due to some side events, some variable may get changed. So using this watch commands, you can identify the places where a particular variable get changed. That is very useful in debugging the program. Like that, no debugger has several useful commands. So one called break trace, which, which says about the uh, segmentation pause occurs of the functions, occurs at the functions. And then there is a command called where can think of this function as work, it works similar to this break trace. <coughs> And there is a function called finish. So if, especially if you're going to or debugging through a function, you perhaps you want to execute entire function and return to a pole. So then use the function finish. 
and then you can use delete to delete the breakpoints you introduce and then you can get information about breakpoints like that there are so many useful functions uh, commands available in, in with the gdb or the gnome debugger so when you start writing series programs and when you start developing your algorithms you see c gdb will be very useful because sometimes especially when you write recursive functions like that so sometimes your program may get crashed so you may feel very difficult to identify reason for crash so there the debugger will help you with that i would like to conclude this session in this session i discuss briefly on memory pointers the pointers and different pointer types variable pointers and function pointers and the idea of using these pointers why we need these pointers and so on so then i discuss about no debugger especially when you use pointers you may face issues of crashing due to the wrong kind of due to the uh, usage of those pointers if you don't use these pointers properly the program will crash so then you need to identify where it get crashed to correct it so for that so gdb or the gdb debugger is very useful so because of that i have discussed the debugger as well with that i have concluded this lecture series with fundamentals so now we need to learn advanced things like different data structures how to access files how to create network connections network circles and so on advanced things All right so until we start learning that so thank you very much for listening so far or following so far with this interesting course program and problem solving